Hi, um, this is my first attempt at a tutorial video, so bear with me, you might not be as smooth as I'd, I'd hope for it to be. Um, I'm going to take you through today how a good, easy process to get um, Kaplan tape um, onto a heat, uh, a print surface, which you want to use in your 3D printer. Um, I've had this board, well, I had this. I designed this board and I've got the um, design on Thingiverse, I'll link it down below. Um, but I've had this board cut, laser cut from 3mm aluminium. Um, corners are cut out for, um, uh, this version is for a 3 um, post NK4 2A heat bed. Um, I have another version on Thingiverse as well, which have these top two corners cut out as well um, for a 4 post um, heat bed. Um, so start with removing all the old Kapton tape from the from the um, from your heat bed if you've used it before from your print surface. Give it a good clean. I scrubbed mine down with some um, steel wool to give it a nice clean finish to make sure everything's clean. At this stage, a lot of people like using acetone to to give it a good rub down, but I think given the the next steps, we we're not going to need that. Um, so the idea with this is to have your heat bed nice and clean, ready to go. Then we need to prep um, some, some Kapton tape. We've got nice wide Kapton tape, but I'm going to need two of these um, to cover this board. If you have the thinner version, it's, the process will, will still make your life a lot easier. Um, it's just more repetitions of the same thing. I've got two pieces of Kapton tape prepped and ready to go. Now, what you want to do now is take your bed, it's a bit of plain water, just get the surface wet that you want to put the tape onto. Okay, yes. And then what you want to do is take some normal um, dishwashing liquid um, and just drizzle a very small amount of it on, like a couple of drops, and just get that all over your your print surface. So get it nice and covered quite smoothly. What this does is it just prevents the water from drying out too quickly and just keeps the surface nice and wet. Um, a couple more drops of water on there. All nice and wet. Right. Now we need to take our two pieces of Kaplan tape that we've prepped and lay it down. Don't worry about it getting stuck at this stage because the purpose of the water is to keep the, the glue from sticking down, which gives you a couple of minutes to now get it nicely aligned and straight on your um, on your heat bed. Right, so squeeze the two sides together. Um, do try and make a nice effort on this to keep it to get it nicely aligned. So at this stage, once they're nicely aligned, um, what you're going to do now is try and squeeze out by just gently rubbing your finger, get your finger nice and wet so it slides easily. Just squeeze out any excess water and any bubbles that are obviously visible. Um, this is quite easy because it's all still wet. Nothing's quite gotten stuck to the bed yet. Okay. Now the next step is the hard part, is to leave it to dry. So there's waiting involved, which is always quite hard for me. Step away, it's mostly dry, dry but it's actually still got quite a bit of water underneath. So, but at this stage, it's, it's again gotten quite sticky enough to, I think, stay in the right place. So all I'm going to do now is just take a pair of scissors, cut around the, 
the outside of this thing and I'll show you guys out. So at this stage you want to cut pretty much as close as you can to the edge. Then I want you to get it exactly right there. Just close enough is good. As you can see, the there's quite a bit, it's quite wet still. Um, there's quite a bit of water on. So don't worry about it too much at this stage if it if it lifts. Um, it's just because it's still wet underneath. As soon as the water is completely evaporated, um, the cap on tape re regains its, its stickiness and it sticks fine. One thing I like to do is in this region where the, the cutout is, um, this is obviously where the electronic contacts come for your, for your heat bed. I like to leave the, the cap on tape there and actually fold it underneath rather than cu cutting it all flush. Um, just a little bit of extra insulation where you've got a, a conductive surface near fairly high current. So again, just going to do the same for the other side. Um, you really do need to actually leave it to dry some more. What I quite often do is when it's completely dry, I take a normal little standing knife and actually on the top just scrape against the side of the plate like that and that, that then cuts through the, the top of the thing you get exactly flush mount all the way through. Um, what I'll do right now quickly though is to just cut Little notches right in there. And this one can then go straight around. And that that bit I don't cut flush, as I said. Um, provides just a little bit of insulation near the high current bits. Uh, so those I actually leave on as it's well, they'll stick when it's dry. More waiting required. So, um, as we saw, it's probably now dry enough. So, what I normally do now is just to cut it along the edges. And there's your final product. At this stage, it would actually be a good idea to, to give it a quick rub down with some um, acetone, um, just to make sure that there's no greasy um, layer left from where we, we rubbed it down with our fingers. So give that a quick rub down. Okay. There we go. And that's ready to go.